Hi there, SF Logic Ninja here, or you can call me David Earl, and this is your tip and trick day. Let's talk a little bit about a new function in Logic 10 that I think is incredibly cool. It's called MIDI effects. So I've got an instrument here, a retro synth with a compressor and some reverb on it, and it makes a nice little sound. Now, it used to be that setting up an arpeggiator in Logic was a real pain, but now with MIDI effects, it's incredibly easy. Just above the retro synth, we have our MIDI effects. There's a reason for that. If we think about signal passing down from top to bottom in a channel strip, the MIDI effects are happening before the instrument. So the MIDI effects are actually playing the instrument. And this is important to understand because it's not like a compressor or an EQ or reverb or anything like that. It's actually uh, a process of taking MIDI data, let's say chords, and arpeggiating them. So MIDI effects are a process that happens to MIDI before it actually reaches the instrument. Now let's choose the arpeggiator. And have a look at this. It used to be that when you had an arpeggiator in Logic, Logic always had to be in play to give some clock to the arpeggiator and it all had to be set up in the environment window. It was really kind of intimidating. Uh, Logic 10 has taken all of that away. It's way easy now. As long as this play button is activated, your arpeggiator is working. Now we have the default setting on right now. And essentially, it's just arpeggiating up. Now it's important to see that when I hold a chord down, see how this area lights up? Well, one thing that's kind of neat is if you uh, hold a chord, when you drag this little area into the arrange window, that's actually taking the MIDI of the arpeggiator and placing it in the arrange window. That's pretty cool. So a quick overview of the arpeggiator. To the right, we have different modes. Under latch mode, if I hold a chord, it's just gonna keep playing. Now what's interesting, and it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing, I'm holding a chord, it starts arpeggiating, and I let go, and then I start hitting random notes on the keyboard, and what it's doing is it's transposing the entire arpeggio up and down. So let me do that again. I'm going to latch it, and then after I latch it, I'm just going to hit individual notes. Gated transpose is slightly different than the other transpose version that we used. If I hold a chord, that's now defined the chord. And if I hit any individual note, now it's playing that arpeggio using one note. And the difference between this and the other transpose mode is it's gated, which means when I let go, it stops playing. Let's check out add. Add is pretty self-explanatory. You hit a note, start adding notes. So it's latching, and then as I hit new notes, it's adding that into the queue for things to be arpeggiated. Add temporarily. So this way we hold the first chord, it holds that chord, and then any additional notes that I uh, hold down, it's going to add to the previous chord, and then when I let go, it only gates the new chords that I play. So that's pretty cool. And then through. Helps if I put latch mode on. So 
So what's happening now is we hold down a chord, it arpeggiates the chord, and then I can solo on top of it. So that's pretty cool as well. So you hold down your first chord and then you just basically solo on top of it. So that's pretty wonderful. Then you can clear any latches that you have. So that'll work on anything that's been latched. Okay, let's go down here. We have our rate. That's pretty simple. Um, we just make it slower or faster and it's synced to our song. We have arpeggiate up, arpeggiate down, arpeggiate up and down, invert your arpeggiation swap and then as played now next to that we have variations the variations they're gonna decide what gets arpeggiated more or less and they're all a little bit different but they have to do with which notes it's going to have a probability of hitting more when it's arpeggiating so you should just play around with these variations this will be more of the high notes this will be more of the low notes then we have our range. We have a range in octaves. Uh, if you click here, it also does inversions. So first, second, and third inversion. And if you have a seventh, I guess it does a fourth. So that's pretty neat. It actually does inversions. So in octave range, it's pretty self-explanatory. If I, I'm just gonna play a triad. So that's two octaves. Now if I go to inversions, So it's playing C, E, G, E, G, C. Now let's go to the third, uh, three inversions. And then four. Which repeats the first inversion. Unless I, you know, use more than three notes. That's pretty wonderful. All right, down below we have our pattern mode. Now, as you see, I only get eight steps to this pattern right now. I'm gonna hit latch, and I'm gonna change it to uh, reset. So on reset, every time I hit a chord, it resets the arpeggiator. Now in live mode, it works pretty much like we expect a uh, arpeggiator to work. If we go to grid mode though, we can actually add chords in on top of our arpeggiator as well. So I'm gonna go to grid mode, and in grid mode, it's no longer just defined, the, our arpeggiation length is no longer just defined by how many notes I put down. I'll put the length right now at 16. If you want to, there are, if I go to the right here, we can just keep going. If we want, we have 128 steps to this arpeggiator. That's an awful lot though, and more than I can ever remember. So I'm gonna stick with 16 for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tell Logic what kind of a pattern I want. And as it is now, it's gonna go stepping through each of the notes according to this pattern. Now, I'll have some chords on 4, 10, and 13. Maybe fill it in with some other notes. And these bars are denoting velocity. So it's gonna be, I'm gonna have it lower velocity on the chords here. I mean, right there, it sounds like we're gonna start a song. It's pretty awesome. Um, okay, so that's pattern mode. Next to that, we have options. So you have note length, you have randomization, uh, velocity randomization. You can also change this to crescendo, so it'll actually crescendo the velocities as played. Swing, cycle length. Under keyboard, we have some cool stuff. Um, basically, 
what it shows you. There it's showing me the uh, chord that I'm playing. But if I want to, I could actually snap this to a scale if I want to. So input snap, instead of chromatic, I'll say a major scale. And literally, I could lay my hand down on the keyboard anywhere. So I just, I literally just laid my arm down on the keyboard there and it sounds good. Because it's quantizing to scale, which is a feature in Logic 10 in a lot of different areas of Logic 10 that it's pretty cool. So I'll turn it back to chromatic again, which is going to be pretty much as played. If I hit this power button over here that has, says keyboard split, then we got some interesting things happening. Down below, we have what's called a remote. This is a way that we can control different aspects of the arpeggiator using the lower octaves of the keyboard. Now that's a little too low for my keyboard. I'm going to have to move the remote up a bit. So these keys down below, so there's C3, and below that, I'm going to have my remote controls. As you see, when I'm hitting these keys, it's changing aspects of the arpeggiator. This allows you to use the arpeggiator live in a bunch of really compelling ways. And if you want to see what the remote is doing, you just click this button. And there you go. Rest, delete, tie, clear, play, latch, stop. This is your direction. Pretty awesome, right? Then we go to controller. This is where you can assign MIDI controllers to destinations within the arpeggiator. So the arpeggiator is incredibly deep. And I think you should check it out. And then once you check out the arpeggiator and run through all of its options, try putting an arpeggiator after an arpeggiator. Then you can get some really interesting results. All right, we'll explore some other MIDI effects later. But for now, I think that arpeggiator is pretty amazing. All right, see you later. Ciao. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool. And until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more. And that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music. Um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.